Amen. Hallelujah. Everybody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Just remain standing for one minute. I want you to listen to one of the lines of the songs we heard. Don't take it for granted. What is happening today is different from what it could have been if you who are here were not Christians. I addressed the press in Nigeria last week about four times. And one of the things I said is, if you add the sins on earth to criminals, the world have no reason to be in existence. But when you take us out, then sin reduces. I want to thank God for Jesus that have given us his life that we might have redemption. Thank you, choir. I've never seen Dr. Reed ever mad with you. I'm looking forward to the day he will be angry with you so I can take you home. <laughs> Please be seated, everybody. Thank you. I told Dr. Reed yesterday, every Easter period, I personally ask God to speak to me about why God sent his son. Christmas is the most celebrated event in mankind's history. And great enough about Christmas, every year, sinners and saints celebrate Christmas. The birth of Christ is one of the most historical events that have no substitute on earth. It was funny this year, the Muslims were trying to find out when the moon will come out so they can take their date of Ramadan. They searched for two days. And one night in Nigeria, they left the station, TV station open till one o'clock looking for a new moon so they can say the Ramadan fast is over. And when they finished, they said it came out at 20 minutes past 1 a.m. And I just said, simple English would have made you understand that when new moon is coming out, it comes out between 7 and 8, not 1 a.m if he's coming out for the first time. Which means, nobody knows when Muhammad was born, nobody knows when he died, no one knows how he lived. And for you to get this secured in your heart, you've never seen a picture drawn on the street and say, this is Muhammad. You can see some picture, they say, this is Christ. Whether he's the one or not, you believe that is Jesus. But no picture of Muhammad. And I thank God for that. But the birth of Christ is very, very significant. Born to save the world. Born to give us new birth. But when we come to Easter, the Bible says without resurrection, our faith is in vain. And I want you to take the scripture of Easter story very, very seriously. I want us to go to the book of Luke, two scriptures I want us to consider that have so great meaning to my life, and I just hope that what it means to me is what it might mean to you, and give you the joy of redemption, bearing in mind that if Christ rise not from the dead, our faith is in vain. First scripture is in Luke chapter 24. I'm going to read long scriptures today. That's what I left home for. And as Pastor Reed said, I'm just wondering what will be happening in Benin now with those 
thousands of people that fly from all over the country to hear me preach Easter message. And for the first time in 34 years, I'm missing Easter Sunday from Benin. Thank God that the step of a righteous man is ordered by God. So I'm here by right, not by mistake. <laughs> Verse 1. Now, upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came into the sepulchre, bringing the spices, which they had prepared, and setting others with them. And they found the stone, stone rolled away from the sepulchre. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garment. And as they were afraid, and bowed down their faces to the earth. They said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinners, of sinful men, and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words and returned from the sepulchre and told all these things unto the eleven and to all the rest. It was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary the mother of James and other women that were with them which told these things unto the apostles. And their words seems to them as it tells, and they believed them not. The apostles are the one Jesus left the story of his death to, to tell. His resurrection, his life, and to proclaim. The first thing that baffled me here, these Three women named and one other, the four Marys, came and said to the apostles, we've been to the grave. We are just coming from the sepulcher. He is risen from the dead. And the Bible said their story looked to the apostles as tales. If the apostles who were three years and a half in Bible school graduated, we have certificate, not believing. <laughs> you see, we have much work to do about retelling the story of resurrection. Without resurrection, our gathering here today is in vain. Thank God that Mary and Joanna and Mary, the mother of James, Madeline, were able to say, He's risen. Church goers are not hard to find. Those who know that Christ died and rose are too few. That's why the gospel must be proclaimed wherever we are. Say with me this morning, he's risen. He's risen. Say it louder. He's risen. Now listen to this. Then arose Peter and ran unto the sepulchre. And stooping down, he beheld the linen clothes. Underlying the words... They lay in clothes, laid by themselves, and departed, wondering in himself at that which was come to pass. And behold, two of them went, went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem about three score for long. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together and risen and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holding that they should not know him. And he said unto them, What manner of communications are these that ye have one to another as ye walk and are sad? And the one of them whose name was 
Cleopas answering said unto him, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem, and hast not known the things which are come to pass there in these days? And he said unto them, What things? And they said unto him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death, and have crucified him. But we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Yea, and certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulchre. And when they found not his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. That's the song you sang. Mary and Martha didn't say we saw vision. Mary and Martha saw Christ alive. They told the story. He's risen. Angels told us he's the living among the dead. Christ is out of the grave. And thank God he's risen from the dead. Amen. Listen to the rest of the scriptures. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulchre and found it, found it, even so as the women had said. But him they saw not. Then he said unto them, O fools, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? Verse 27. And beginning at Moses... And all the prophets, he, Christ, expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. And they drew nigh unto the village which they went. And he made as though he would have gone further. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to tarry with them. And it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them. He took bread and blessed it and break and gave to them. Verse 31. Two story of Israel. And their eyes were open and they knew him and he vanished out of their sight. Easter time is a time of knowing Christ and having new fellowship with Christ, having new relationship with Christ. Easter time is a time if you ever doubted the living Christ, today he can be on the same way with you wherever you go in life. How many will say amen to that? Amen. Here is Christ, dead, buried, third day. He's walking with disciples whom he walked with for three and a half years and they didn't know him. Sad to tell that his voice didn't change. His countenance didn't change. Sad to tell that his voice didn't change. His countenance didn't change. After three and a half years of sleeping in the same place, walking on the same road, doing miracles together, here he is alive, and they didn't even know him. Question, if the disciple didn't know him, who should know him? But thank God, the women knew him. My joy is, he opened their eyes. Say to your neighbor, today your eyes will be opened. <laughs> Say it loud. <laughs> Say it brightly. Say it clearly. Today, your eyes will be open. That is the message of Easter. Easter came to open our eyes. From sin, we can have sight to see righteousness. From death, we can know now we have life. From sickness, we can tell we are free. From bondage, our chains are broken. 
from every chain that chained us down in sin in the past. When Christ rose, the spider web fell out of our eyes. Today, we can know whom Jesus is. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. I love the size of it, brother. Colin, get up. When the Bible said, you know I love holding your hand when I'm preaching. <laughs> he walked them. Jesus rose to stand by you. When trial comes, when pain comes, when temptation comes, when sickness comes, and you realize that this Jesus who was a story to you can now walk on the lonely road with you, you wipe your tears away. He who once died buried in the grave is now rising is risen from the dead and raising you and I up from whatever attack be it cancer be it glaucoma be it high blood pressure whatever sickness that the enemy afflicts our body with the Bible says when Jesus went to the grave he carried our sickness there. When he died, cancer died. When he died, blindness died. When he died, lameness died. When Jesus rose, sickness never rose with him. He left in the grave the things he died for. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. No matter the attack of Satan today in your body or my body, he's standing tall to say sickness have no more dominion over you and I. Let me hear somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. He was walking with them on the miles road. He talks with them. He discussed with them. And he said, why are you so sad? I know you are not sad. <laughs> why are you so sad? What has happened? And they are telling him, haven't you heard? A man called Jesus. He was supposed to be our savior. Where are you sitting? Who sent you to sit? Stand with me. <laughs> Jesus is risen. Why do you want to stand, sit down? <laughs> Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. They said to Jesus, are you a stranger in Jerusalem? He said no. But said, why didn't you hear? A man called Jesus died. He was supposed to save Israel from sin. But now he's dead. And Jesus said, oh fools, didn't you read that if he didn't die, salvation would be incomplete. If he didn't die, the salvation you are talking for the nations would not be complete. And he expounded the scripture from Genesis to Malachi and told them, it was for me the scriptures were written. Now, now, let's sit together to have bread. Let's sit together to talk. And the Bible says, as he sat at meat with them, their eyes were open. Today, my prayer is that every child of God who have been blinded by redemption will have new sight to the glory of God. Amen. Resurrection time is a time you can now tell the Savior that died for me is now walking with me. In my job, in my home, in my marriage, he rose that I may no more walk in loneliness. Today, Jesus is standing by me. And when I remember that he and I can walk together, my joy is full. He's living and risen to die no more. Someone shout hallelujah. hallelujah. You may be seated now. Turn to the book of John. That is the scripture God gave me. I told Dr. Reed yesterday, one of the revelations God ever showed me about resurrection, John chapter 20. I just pray and believe that what God showed me here, he will show it to you. John's Gospel, chapter 20, verse 1. 
the first day of the week, comment Mary Magdalene, early when it was yet dark, unto the sepulchre, and see the stone taken away from the sepulchre. Then she ran it and come it to Simon Peter, and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved, and said unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre, and we know not where they have laid him. Peter therefore went forth, and that other disciple, and came to the sepulchre. Verse 4. So they ran both together, and the other disciple did outrun Peter, and came first to the sepulchre. Verse 5. And he, stooping, and he stooping down, and looking in, saw the linen clothes lying, lying, yet went he not in. Verse 6. Then come Peter, Simon Peter, following him, and went into the sepulchre, and see the linen clothes lie. Verse 7. Underline this verse 7. In Luke 24, we read about the linen clothes alone. Lying there. But verse 7 says, And the napkin that was about his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in the place by itself. And the napkin that was about his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but lying with the but wrapped together in a place by itself. Then went in also that other disciple, who came first to the sepulchre, and he saw and believed. Now look at me, everybody. How could Jesus, who died, buried with the napkin wrapped around his head, get up, First of all, we are told that when they beat him, they stripped him naked. But as you will see in a few verses time, when he got up from the grave, the Bible said he wore sparkling robe. White sparkling robe. The robe was so clean that he said to Mary, touch me no. The mystery of his death is sufficient for me. To believe he died is sufficient for me. To believe he rose from the dead is sufficient for me. But to know when he died, they stripped him almost naked, left little rag with him. But at the third day when he rose up, he had wonderful white sparkling robe. Question to you and I, where did they get the robe from? Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? If God can clothe Christ in the grave, he can clothe you while you are alive. Amen. Did anybody hear what I'm saying? If God can give his son new robe in death, he can give you robe while you are alive. Amen. He can clothe your naked while you are alive. No matter what your experience of hardship is on earth, if God can descend to the grave and give his son a new robe to wear, this is assurance to me. No matter how deep I am in the ground, he who clothed his son we clothe me. I pray that this will sound to your ear loud. He died naked. He rose dressed. Explain that to me if you are an Englishman. Explain that to me if you are a mathematician. Explain that to me if you know everything. Who clothed him in the grave? My heavenly father. Gave him a new robe. My heavenly father gave him a new dress. And the heavenly father who took care of Jesus inside the grave. 
can take care of you on the surface. Did anybody hear what I'm saying? The napkin that was around his head. Jesus got up. A power lifted him from the grave. He took time and took that napkin, wrapped it, and put it where his head was. Here is an example of the napkin. Took it out of his head, wrapped it together, folded it where his head was, he wrapped it and put it there. And calling God told me, if Jesus could engrave, wrap the napkin that was on his head and place it properly in where his head was, he who wrapped the napkin can wrap my life for me. Look at me and let me hear you say big amen. amen. If Jesus was able to remember the good that the napkin did for his head, you and I who are serving him today, no matter what is broken to pieces in our lives, maybe marriage, maybe childbearing, Maybe sickness, maybe job. I don't know what your own problem is on earth today. But the Holy Spirit is telling me to tell you and I if Christ had time for napkin to wrap it, He has time for you, He has time for me. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? If Jesus can wrap the napkin, if Jesus can put the napkin together, if Jesus can fold the napkin in the grave, if Jesus can remember that the napkin was useful to his head in death, now that he's risen, anything trying to lose apart, anything trying to fall apart, whether it's your health, whether it's your joy, whether it's your marriage, if Jesus spent time to wrap the napkin, he's not too busy to wrap your life. He's not too busy to rebuke the devourer from your life. If Jesus could spend time and say, Lily close, he was buried with, be there. Listen to the mystery I'm bringing out to you this morning. If you read the crucifixion from chapter 19 of John's Gospel, and see how they whip him. See how they took everything from him. And Joseph of Arimathea. Coming to wrap him. With lily clothes. And when Jesus rose. He left the grave clothes. One point. He wrapped the napkin. Second point. But he came out of death. Dressed. In sparkling white clothes. God who spent time to care for his son in the grave. Is still looking for whosoever is put in the grave today. To put their life together. Resurrection tells you and I. No matter how deep we are in the pit. One day. God who raised Christ from the dead. Will raise our mortal bodies again. The world may deny you your clothes. The world may deny you health. The world may deny you money and joy. 
But if God went to the grave, I don't know what that means to you in England, but I know what it means to me as a child of God. That if God can go to the grave, made a new robe in heaven, put on him to get up. I who is not in the grave yet, Peter, God has a new robe for me. What has the world denied you? Resurrection reassures you. Whatever man has taken from you, God will give it back to you. Resurrection is time of remembrance. That a Christ who was a story is now a real God to our lives. Whatever is falling apart near you, resurrection reassures you that Satan may touch your body with cancer, but God is going to touch it with resurrection. He who died and now lives can keep him who is not dead alive. The power of Jesus is going to come over you. And the power that raised Jesus from the dead will raise your body from affliction of the enemy. Can somebody say hallelujah? hallelujah. I want to think again that Christ was not in hurry. The journey was Friday, Saturday. On a Sunday morning like this, he who said, I have power to lay down my life. And I have power to raise it again. When that hour of rising came, <sighs> nobody with him in the grave. Disciples fled. Acquaintances left. Think, 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 think. Think afresh. Think. Think of someone wrapped. <laughs> Tied. Tied hand and feet. When the hour of rising came, his hand that was tied was freed. His feet that was tied. Raise your leg. <laughs> A power loosed his hand. From the chain. A power lose his feet. From the chain. He got up. Not assisted. In the grave. When you are very sick. You can hardly put on your coat. When you are very sick. You can hardly wear your trousers. But Jesus was wrapped. 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 Put in the grave. A day like today, put in the grave. A day like today, almost 2,000 years ago, power came from on high, broke the chain, untied him. When that mystery of the loosening of his body from the wrapped clothes happened, he, Jesus, looked at his head. And saw the napkin that was used in tying his head. He took it. He looked at it. He didn't throw the napkin away. He folded it. He wrapped it. And by the side his head was, he put it there. He left the lily lying down there. He didn't say, give me hand. Who is standing there? Pick me up. Invisible force lifted the Son of God from the grave. That power 
power that raised Jesus from the dead is still alive today. Amen. That love that made him go to the napkin and wrapped it. He still has that love for you and I today. Choir, Jesus is still wrapping life together. No matter how dismembered, no matter how scattered, no matter how thrown aside we have been from January till today, he who wrapped the napkin is standing by us now to wrap our lives and give us new beginning. God who gave his son sparkling robe in death is still saying to the naked, you are not too far in the pit that my heavenly tailors cannot bring your robe to give you, to wear, to get out, to shame the enemy. I'm just thinking, Pastor Mike, that when Jesus, if the way he died, stripped naked, denied according to Isaiah, if that was how he robed, he got up from the grave and rose up and was walking on the street of Jerusalem with that little napkin, with that little pant on him, men and women would have fled. I say, a ghost is in town. But God who never does wrong, he gave robe of righteousness to Jesus Christ before he got up from the grave. How down are you in life? How beaten low are you? Has the enemy so given you tough time that you are now in the grave of denier of right and power? Have you been denied love? Have you been denied all you ever own? The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, the Bible says, if the same power that raised Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he will quicken your mortal bodies. I have spent few weeks trying to ask myself, since God showed me this scripture, why would Christ have time for napkin? Just as you said, the simplicity of the gospel is what I'm looking for. The complication of it, I leave that to God. But the simplicity of it, I'm asking myself. Who wore Jesus the robe in the grave? Who untied him? Have you ever seen anything wrapped? Have you ever seen anything tied? Jesus was wrapped by Joseph of Arimathea, according to the book of Matthew chapter 26, 27, and put in the grave. Who lose him? Who removed the robe? Who removed the ropes? Who unchained him? Who took the rope from his legs? Who took the chain from his hand? Who loosed him? What power did that? Are you telling me that God cares enough? No matter how deep our graves are, he can meet us there. If Jesus was met by his father in the grave, I who is not in the pit yet, he can meet me at the level of my need. Resurrection is telling me. The, right, the raising of Christ from death is telling me that if God could go far enough to the grave to give his son a new robe, he has a robe for me where I am today. Is anyone hearing what I'm saying? You are not too naked for God to deny you new clothing. You are not too tied in bondage of sin and sickness, in fear and doubt. No secret will hold you so much that the God who raised Jesus from the dead cannot come to your level to touch you and heal you. The songs you are singing, choir, they are no slogans. 
They are real songs. Hallelujah, Jesus bought me. Hallelujah, Jesus raised me from the dead. They should change from slogans to our head to reality. That if God could clothe his son in the grave, I who is still on the earth, not in the grave yet, his message to me should be as good as the message he had on his son. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. And if Jesus could care for the napkin, if he can take this napkin around his head off, looked at it, I'm thinking of me, Pastor Reed, if I was the one that is chained hand and foot and wrapped in napkin, when I, and wrapped in linen like that, when I rose up, the first thing is to run away. But Jesus stood peacefully. He took the napkin. He folded it. He wrapped it. Peter came, saw it. The other disciples came, saw it. That is telling me that what God is going to do for us next, our generation will see it and magnify our God. Somebody say big hallelujah. hallelujah. Look at verse 8 again. <clears throat> then went in also that other disciple which came first to the sepulchre. And he saw and believed. Resurrection is a time we dump our unbelief. When we look at the grave empty, we should believe. When we see the linen clothes taken out of his body that were wrapped around him, it should make us believe. When we know that he has wrapped the napkin for us, he should make us believe. When we come to realize that he was buried naked, but came back from the grave clothed, let's stop doubting. Let's start believing. The God who is concerned about you and me is still alive today. Give me a big shout of hallelujah. hallelujah. Maybe to you, Easter is just, well, four months ago he was born. That to many denominations, that's what Jesus is. Always four months old. Born in December, died in April. He has overgrown that. He was born to set us free. He rose to give us eternal life. He who died and rose now says to you and I, because I live, you shall live also. Can I hear you say amen to that? Amen. Verse 9. For as yet they knew not the scripture, that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away again unto their own home. But Mary stood without at the sepulchre, weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulchre. Verse 12. And she had two angels in white sitting. In one, the one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. And they say unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She said unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing and knew not that it was Jesus. Aren't you shocked to know that in every moment of our tears, English Christians, anytime you see yourself in tears, know that Jesus is not far away. As she wept, she looked. Just by her, was Jesus standing and said unto her, Why are you crying? The Bible says, She said, They've taken my Lord away. Have you cried recently? Has anything baffled you recently? Up to last week? Up to yesterday? Up to this morning? Clean your eyes and look afresh. Jesus is not far from where you are. When miracle is about coming, 
when a ministry like this, and that's what I want to say to all, I want you in leadership to hear this. When a breakthrough is coming, the nearest people in leadership will begin to receive persecution that will make them shame the gospel. But thanks be to God, he who rose, he who rose, he who rose, will stand by us. You are in a ministry. I remember I said a few years ago here, something new was about to happen. Last night, I told a few of us that had dinner. There is an explosion coming. This wall, bam. That wall, bam. The walls need to go so that God will move. No fish can grow more than the size of water. You don't find sharks in little streams. Am I right? You don't see lions in the field. You see them in forest. When you expand, God fulfills it. First time I came to this ministry, the big crowd of this church was like from here to there. So be one of the biggest in England in those days. Today, since my coming here, this place has changed five times. And it's going to change two times more. Can somebody say hallelujah? hallelujah? And I believe by God's grace, ten years from now, where we are now will be children's church. Amen. I know you are afraid to say Amen. If you are bold to say amen, stand up and say loud amen. Amen. To Mary, Jesus was more than visiting the church. Mary came to sepulchre to take Jesus away. My message for you this Easter is to take Jesus home. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? Yes. You have visited Jesus enough. Take him home. Take him home. Mary said, to me, he's more than just a master. To me, he's more than a friend. To me, this is the same Mary out of whose life Jesus took seven devils out. Today she's saying, not only that devil have left me, but I want to take Jesus to my house. Wave your hand and say hallelujah. hallelujah. Don't you think it's time for you to take Jesus home from, from the church? I'm asking you a question. Don't you think it's time for you to take Jesus home from the church? Yes. Don't come and visit him every Tuesday, every Friday, and every Sunday morning. Take him home. So when you are coming next week, you say, Christ and I were on our way to the house of worship. Everybody say, hallelujah. hallelujah. That I may take him home with me. Hear these words. Take, I want to take him away. Verse 16. Jesus said unto her, Mary, look at this. Mary was looking for Christ. Christ is identifying himself with Mary. When was the last time you were walking and Jesus called your name straight? If you haven't made your name known to him, this is the day the Lord has made. Rejoice and be glad and let him call you by name. Mary! She turned himself and said unto him, Rabboni, which is to be interpreted, Master. Jesus said unto her, Touch me not. For, 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 I am not yet ascended to my father, but go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my father and your father. Mike, this is the message I bring to England. Jesus rose that his father Peter may become your father and my father. Is anybody hearing me? Before he died, he said, I go to my father. When he rose, he said, my father is now my father and your father. We are no more orphans. We are now begotten. We are now joined here with Christ. 
He rose to adopt us. He rose to make us heirs and joint heirs with Christ. You say, the whole side, does that mean I have no more crisis? Why not? Why not? Crisis present Christ the more. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you find yourself in crisis, you know Christ is not far away. Jesus is the bridge over troubled water. This man was reading to the hearing of two of us yesterday a statement I made to the press. Many Christians don't know how to endure hard time. And I was asking the press, when the wind, when the wave in the water is bestirious, do you see fish jump to the land? <laughs> Question, everybody. Yadley, do you hear what I'm saying? Do you see fish because the wave is too temperate? The temp the tempest is too high. Why does the fish not jump to the land? Because there are many fishermen without hook looking for fish to catch and put on the fire. <laughs> if your business is passing through tempest, if your marriage is passing through mysterious wind, don't jump out of the water if you want to be saved. The harder it is, the stronger you build your winds. So next time you're able to say, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. Amen. Can anybody say amen to that? Amen. This is our, my wife and I, we are having our wedding. Today is supposed to be our time. The Lord will have to forgive you for taking me from Benin. <laughs> Today is our Thanksgiving for our wedding. And last night when I spoke to my wife, she said, Honey, I, do you mean you are really in England? You left me. <laughs> That's her question to me. Today is supposed to be our Thanksgiving day, the day many of the church pastors bring us gifts. And say, I say, honey, we have been having celebration. There's a reason God is, maybe one single person, God sent me to England for and say, don't let that your business die. Don't let that your marriage wreck. There's a reason for God bringing me here today. And you might be the one why God said, the house I go. The tempest may be strong. The wind may be bestirious. Fish don't jump to land. There's safety in the stormy water than on land. Too many fishermen that already have firewood and stove waiting for fish that will jump out of water to roast. <laughs> Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? Yes. I say, are the Christian hearing what I'm saying? Yes. The fact that the wind is bestirious shows that God is trying to make your wind Go stronger. So that you who used to fly, pa, pa, like, like, like the vulture, can now soar like the eagle and stay there where the wind is highest, most you don't need. If what I heard, what I read about ego is true, when ego takes off, it doesn't wait in lower side. It goes so high until it gets to the altitude that the aeronautic has a name for. Where you don't need fuel anymore. You stay balanced on that atmosphere. That's where God wants to take the church to. The resurrection of Jesus this year is to take you from the grave and put you on the land. Not only to land on the land, but to stand fast in liberty where with Christ have made you free and be not entangled with the yoke of bondage. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. You say, that I don't know how I feel. Everything about me is turning around. It's falling apart. That is because your resurrection is about to take place. Believe me, there's a resurrection in your job, a resurrection to your health, a resurrection to your marriage. The devil tried to kill it. The devil tried to kill your body. But today, the 10th day, the 11th day of April, there's a resurrection. I said there's a resurrection. There's a new rope coming to your marriage. There's a new rope coming to your business. There's a new hope coming to your home. Whatever the enemy tried to destroy in the past, the grave is empty. No power can hold you down anymore. Give me a shout of hallelujah. hallelujah. Mary, I'm going to my father. Pastor Reed, you don't know what that means to me. He died. Having the heavenly father alone, when he rose, 
Say, my heavenly father is now your father. And my father. Say with me, his father. His father. Is now. His father. His father. And my father. And my father. The, father the father of our Lord Jesus. Is now. Is now. His father. His father. And my father. And my father. I, am I am now. A child. A child. Of my heavenly king. Of my Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Jesus has a father. I have a father. And because he's alive, we are alive also.